This is my Kenwood TMG 707. It's a dual band VHF UHF mobile transceiver. It actually dates from around 1998, so it's uh, 26 years old. I've used it mobile over the years. It's been in several of my cars. It's also been used in the uh, shack as a, as a base a station transceiver. And for some time it was used as a high power D-Star node. So it's had quite a hard life. Um, when it was in the car, um, it was constantly monitoring, scanning. And when I did transmit with it, it was always on, on high power. The radio does about um, something like 40 watts or 50 watts on um, VHF. And 35 watts on UHF. And uh, the other great thing about this particular radio is it's got a uh, remote head uh, facility. So you can detach the head unit like this. So that's now free of the body of the transceiver. Okay. You can remote mount the head. I had the body of the transceiver under the um, seat of the, the car. When I had it mobile and I had the uh, the head unit on the dashboard but what I really like about this I think remote mount heads are great for mobile use but you can also clip the head unit to the body of the radio like that and and use it as a normal mobile and uh, I know some of the more modern stuff you can't attach the head directly to the body of the radio so that's a good thing about this. I'll just turn it on. It's got a nice clear screen, a big display. Um, we've got various channels programmed in here for uh, monitoring and for transmitting on. It's got wide band coverage. It covers air band as well. As you can see, it also you can monitor 446, um, which in the UK at least is a license free uh, system. Part of the 70 centimeters band in the US, I believe. And I've got some 70 sems frequencies in here, some 2 meter frequencies and so on. Um, but you can also scan airband with it, it's got a, an AM function. So all in all, quite a versatile radio for something that's 26 years old. One of the drawbacks I always found with this is it's quite fiddly to program the memory channels. Um, and given that it's quite an old rig, certainly at the time I bought it, the only way to program it was... Um, through uh, the, the the keyboard or the, the head unit of the radio but it's come to my attention that believe it or not there is some software for this radio and I've got hold of a programming lead I haven't tried it yet but that's what I'm going to try in this video I've downloaded the software the software looks quite old I'm hoping it'll run on my Windows 11 machine I'm not entirely sure whether it will but we're gonna try the um, Kenwood software with a programming lead and see if I can program some channels in this radio. Now, you've seen the Hero Yasu, the cheap Chinese radio that I've got, the 50 pound dual bander. Uh, this is a whole different world, of course. This is a much heavier radio, it's much better built as you'd expect from Kenwood. Um, this again would be a very useful radio to take portable. It is quite a bit heavier than the uh, Hero Yasu, that's the only drawback, but. Look at the display, and this is a monochrome LCD display, and this is going to be visible in any light. So that would be a, a real a plus point. So let's see if we can use the Kenwood software. Let's see if we can program the radio. Okay, I uh, connected up the TMG707 to the programming lead that I've purchased. Programming lead connects on the front port of the radio, opposite the uh, mic port. I'll show you um, a clip of the port that the uh, the lead goes into. It's uh, terminated with a USB. And uh, luckily, as soon as I plugged it in, the computer responded. So it detected the lead. I didn't need any additional drivers. There's quite a few drivers on this machine anyway. I use it for a lot of programming. The... Um, Kenwood software is called MCP707. I'll just find it on my computer here. MCP G707 is here there. Let's open it up. Okay. Now, I'm guessing this originally would have been intended for Windows XP or even earlier, 1998. It might have been Windows 95, Windows Millennium. 
but it seems to run on my Windows 11 machine here. You can't make the window any bigger. Can't maximize it. It is as it is. This uh, this is it. One thing to watch out for. It caught me when I first tried to run this software. If you click on the radio button here, you'll see you've only got two options: COM1 or COM2. When you plug this in, it's quite possible that your programming lead will default to another COM port. You will need to go into Windows and change that COM port that is allocated to either one or two. Okay, you can't do anything other than one or two in this software. Mine came up as COM10, so I had to go in and alter that. I've now got it on COM1. So I'll just show you how we can read from the radio. So we've got these menu uh, buttons at icons here. If I just hover, we've got write and read. Let's click on read. There are some program, uh, some memories programmed into this radio. So we'll just read it. It's reasonably slow compared to some of the modern stuff. But it does work. Okay. And there we are. We have some uh, stuff programmed in here. Okay. Now... You'll see some of the channels are named, some aren't. I'm going to go into one of the pre-programmed channels here, channel 3, memory 3, 145750. That's my local um, repeater. I'm going to give it a name. A bit easier to do it on a keyboard than um, on the radio. Can be done on the radio. This is how I did the other ones. GB3BC, we'll put that in. And... Uh, We'll give this other one uh, a name as well. There's another repeater that's accessible from my home. GB3WR. Okay, so we'll pop that name in. So let's just have a closer look at the individual memory lines. You can see you can um, go up and down the channel numbers here. You can set a uh, receive frequency on the step. Set the CTCSS tones. Um, if you're programming a repeater and it's anything other than a standard minus 600 hertz, uh, which is what we use in the UK on two meters, then you're going to need to click on the split channel button here. You can then program in your RX and TX frequencies. And of course, set your tones to whichever tone uh, you're going to use. Okay, plus and minus shifts there for the standardized shifts. Um, best, I would say, in this day and age to use a split channel um, facility there. Okay, you can program um, DTMF codes here. You've got nine um, DTMF memories. You can program a calling channel for both um, 70 centimeters UHF and VHF. Uh, you can set, um, I guess these will be default receive frequencies when you switch bands. So you've got the air band frequency there. You've got 144 megahertz, 300 megahertz, where you've also got receive um, functionality. And UHF, 430, and uh, 800 megahertz. Not sure what you'd find up there uh, in uh, these days, but not a lot, I suspect. But that's the extent of what you can program with the radio. If you just look at the menu buttons across the top, you've got paste, copy, cut, to um, cut and paste memories in here, I guess. We can write to the radio, read from the radio. You could print the list of memories. You can obviously save this file somewhere. You can open up a pre-programmed file, or you can start a new file. So that's the MCPG707 software for the Kenwood uh, TMG707 radio. I'll just write my little amendments to the uh, radio because I added a couple of names, didn't I, to the channels. Okay, it says it's writing the data. In a moment, I'll check. Maybe that I'll have to switch the radio on and off. I don't know. It doesn't. Um, there's no indication on the radio. It's rebooted the radio. But as the uh, memories are writing, there's no indication on the radio that um, 
there's any transfer of data nothing I can see anyway but um, I'll just show you um, a screenshot but uh, the uh, the names that I programmed into the radio for those two repeaters are there so that uh, data successfully transferred so I'll intend to program quite a bit of this up now um, this will be another radio I'll be looking at taking portable the screen is certainly much more visible than the Hero Yasu, being that it's a monochrome LCD, I'll be able to see it in bright light. Um, it's also capable of a bit more RF power out than the uh, Chinese radio. Um, see, it's quite an old radio, it's had a lot of use, um, but it, we can still get some further use out of it. Uh, how many memories can we program in here? Let's have a look. Um, indications here. 180 by the looks of it so that should be more than sufficient and we've got some um, some oddly labeled ones here I'm not sure what um, that's probably a priority uh, channel but I don't know what these L's and U's signify we need to look at the manual and see but I hope you found that useful I'm impressed that this still runs on Windows 11 given this was probably pre Windows XP I guess this was maybe originally a Windows 95, Windows 98 uh, program. Luckily, it still does run today. Anyway, there's a little bit of info on the old uh, Kenwood TMG707. Around 26 years old now, but still a useful piece of kit. And uh, thank you for watching.